queen and throne to fall. Oh my, hail queen of mercy and of love. Oh Maria, triumph all ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim, heavens and earth resound the hymn, salve, salve, salve Regina. Our sweetness here below, oh Maria, of our hope and sorrow and in woe, oh Maria, triumph all ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim, heaven down the three sides. Here in the beautiful, oh, uh-oh. Sure. Okay. All right. We're, it's, this is uh, Welcome to Mom Days with Mary. I'm Deacon Tom Friedman. This is my wife, Catherine, and we're here in the beautiful Marian Chapel of Nativity Parish. And we're going to begin with our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, fill, fill the, the hearts of your faithful. faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructs the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're excited to bring you the third week of the consecration to St. Joseph. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Catherine, and she will review last week. Okay, well, last week we began um, with days two through eight, and it was an exciting time because we were learning that it was um, the chapters of the days of the week of the book follow the litany of St. Joseph, all the beautiful titles given to um, St. Joseph and giving honor to the God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit. And so it's kind of a beautiful way for it to open up. And um, we learned a lot about it through St. Joseph and kind of through the title of Holy Mary and St. Joseph, that marriage is at the heart of all of it and uh, at the heart of creation and redemption and how important the fatherhood of St. Joseph is in our world today because of all the different attacks upon marriage and fatherhood. Uh, we briefly talked about our spiritual father, how important um, the example of St. Uh, Joseph is to all of us, and he, uh, Jesus took his lead on how to be a man through his father, St. Joseph. We also talked a little bit about the beautiful oratory in Montreal, St. Joseph's Oratory, and the wonderful, wonderful holy saint, St. Andre Bisset, and uh, his love and devotion is such a great example to all of us, and I'm sure to Father Donald Calloway, whose book we're following as we bring this consecration to you. Okay, I think that's everything. All right. Thank you, Catherine. And so we're going to begin right, right away by jumping into the days um, of the, the days readings for each consec- for the consecration. And we're talking about day number nine. And the title of day nine is Noble Offspring of David, Pray for Us. And again, each day is following the litany of St. Joseph. So today is day nine, Noble Offspring of David, Pray for Us. Now, in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, 
we learn that St. Joseph is of the lineage of the Davidic kings. The Old Testament prophets always taught that the Messiah would come from the Davidic line. Mary, our spiritual mother, was most likely also a descendant of King David, but her ancestry is not given in the New Testament. Matthew and Luke present the lineage of Joseph because the Davidic ancestry of the Messiah needed to be shown through the father's line. Therefore, Matthew and Luke made a point of emphasizing that even though Jesus is not the biological son of Joseph, he is the son of Joseph by law. As such, Jesus has a legal right to be called a descendant of King David. From Pope Benedict XVI, he says this, the espousals between Joseph and Mary are an episode of great importance. Joseph was of the royal line of David and in virtue of his marriage to Mary would confer on the son of the virgin, on God's son, the legal title of son of David, thus fulfilling the prophecies. Now St. Joseph was king of the Holy Family. He was not the king of Nazareth, of Israel, or anything like that. Since every man is the king of his home, St. Joseph was the king of his house. In the home of Nazareth, St. Joseph was king, Mary was queen, and Jesus was the prince, awaiting the kingdom prepared for him by his heavenly father. Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, of course, but God's providential love desires that we acknowledge the kingship of St. Joseph in the Holy Family. St. Joseph is a noble Lord. Many saints have often lovingly referred to St. Joseph as their Lord with a small L. St. Teresa of Avila was particularly fond of receive, re, refer to, uh, referring to St. Joseph as her Lord. In using this term, no saint intends to claim that St. Joseph is God because he's a not God. Saints sometimes use the term Lord when addressing St. Joseph out of respect as is done when addressing dignitaries and rulers. Saints love to express their filial relationship to Mary and St. Joseph in devotional language. Mary, for example, is called Madonna, which from the Latin, mea domina, that is, my lady, and is the feminine form of Lord. Referring to St. Joseph as, as Lord has biblical foundations as well. Remember Joseph in the Old Testament, the son of Jacob, the one sold into slavery by his brothers. Well, Joseph's brothers end up calling their brother Lord. For us, St. Joseph is more than a brother. He's our noble spiritual father. He is our loving spiritual father and Lord. All right, now we're going to go into day 10. And that the title of day 10 is light of patriarchs pray for us now the word patriarch means father and what all the patriarchs of the old testament foreshadowed and all christian fathers are called to reflect is the paternal light of god shining through the fatherhood of saint joseph after christ saint joseph is the greatest of all the patriarchs he is the greatest of all fathers St. Joseph is a reflection of the Father of Lights. In the beginning, God created the great luminaries in the heavens, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Without light, creation would be in darkness. In the New Testament, the Father establishes a new creation in Christ. Through Christ, the Father places his divine life, love, and light within our hearts. St. Joseph and his fatherhood play a very important role in God's wonderful plan. St. Joseph is the perfect reflection of the Father of lights, and he helps us to receive the light of Christ. St. Joseph is a bearer of light. He brings Jesus, the true light of the world, to us. St. Joseph will help us to live in the light of God. You are a child of light. You became that in your baptism. As a Christian, Jesus gives you a share in his light. He makes you the light of the world. 
And this is a quote from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5. All of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. The word lumen patriarcharum terrifies Satan. The title Light of Patriarchs appears in the Latin Lumen Patriarcharum. The devil hates Saint Joseph and his light. Satan's other name is Lucifer, the devil, which, which means light bearer. Lucifer lost the light because of his pride and disobedience to God. Now he lives in perpetual darkness and abhors the light. Satan fears your spiritual father because Saint Joseph is a humble creature of flesh and blood, the perfect reflection of the Father of Lights. He is a true and everlasting light bearer, an icon of God the Father. After Jesus and Mary, there is no person that Satan detests more than Saint Joseph. Stay close to Saint Joseph and walk in the light. Okay, and with that, I'm going to call Catherine up because it's, she is going to follow up with uh, days 11, 12, and 11 and 12. So when she uh, makes her way here, that would be great. Um, in the meantime, I could talk, I could talk about the one wonder of St. Joseph uh, called Ite Ad Yosef. And that is, according to Venerable Pope Pius XII, if you wish to be close to Christ, we again repeat, go to Joseph. And that is what Ite Ad Joseph means, go to Joseph. What is the closest possible union you can have with Jesus in this life? The answer is easy. Your reception of Jesus in the Holy Communion. There is no greater intimacy with Jesus possible in this life than when you receive him in the Eucharist at Holy Mass. The Blessed Sacrament is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Did you know that without St. Joseph's earthly paternity of Jesus, you would not now be able to receive the bread of life? St. Joseph was giving, given the role of maintaining and protecting the sacred bread for you. In the book of Genesis, the, brother of, or the son of Jacob, who was sold into slavery by his brothers, was Joseph. And Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, adopted Joseph into his own family. Joseph was regarded as the son of Pharaoh, and he was given great authority. Pharaoh placed him in charge of all the granaries in Egypt, and at the time, Egypt was considered the breadbasket of the world. Joseph did an incredible job of storing up grain. He took in such large quantities of grain that looked like the sand of the seashores. In fact, he stopped keeping records of how much grain they had because it was beyond measure. And then a severe famine broke out in Egypt in the surrounding territories. And Pharaoh, and as a result of the shortage of food, Pharaoh instructed everyone in Egypt, go to Joseph and do whatever he tells you. The famine was so extreme that Joseph's own brothers from far away, the ones who had sold him into slavery, journeyed to Egypt in search of food. The story related in the Old Testament about Joseph is true and is a prefigurement of a much greater Joseph who would bring his son, the bread from heaven, to safety in Egypt. Saint Joseph safeguarded a food capable of saving the entire world. Saint Joseph, our spiritual father, is much greater than the Joseph of the Old Testament. Our, our Saint Joseph is the keeper of the bread from heaven. His desire is that all of his children consume the bread of everlasting life. And God sent Saint Joseph to Egypt so that out of Egypt, Saint Joseph could bring the bread of life to the nations. Saint Joseph saved our bread from Herod. He protected and preserved him in Egypt. 
and he now desires that we receive that bread of life at Holy Mass. St. Joseph's heavenly bread is more numerous than the sands of the sea. His heavenly bread is able to feed all the multitudes and satisfy every soul. Without Joseph, we would not have the living bread of the Eucharist. Mary kneaded the dough in her sacred womb. St. Joseph lovingly preserved the bread in Egypt. He continues to guard and preserve the bread of life in every tabernacle in the world. Today, there is a worldwide spiritual and moral famine on the earth. Souls are dying of a lack of spiritual nourishment. Hearts are broken, marriages are ruined, lives are destroyed, children are murdered in the womb. Truth and common sense are in short supply. Spiritual and moral famine in the world is devastating every nation, laying waste to humanity. There is not a single country left that has not been affected by it. What are we to do? To whom can we go to find nourishment for our souls? Go to Joseph and do whatever he tells you. From Genesis chapter 41, verse 55, the words of Pharaoh telling his people, go to Joseph and do whatever he tells you. All right, I've called Catherine up and she's going to continue with day 11. Okay. All right. So we're learning uh, from the litany of St. Joseph under his titles, all the beautiful characteristics, virtues, and who he is. And so now that's going to bring us to um, spouse of the mother of God, pray for us. And this is, like my husband said, day 11 of the retreat. Oh, okay. There has never been a man more in love with a woman than St. Joseph was in love with Mary. What dignity and holiness were required of St. Joseph to be the husband of Mary. In her feminine heart, Mary knew that she was secure in the manhood of St. Joseph. He was her knight and warrior. Every wife deserves such a husband to be their knight and their warrior for their, for their spouse, to be a gentleman, a protector, and a good father. Women deserve men who are strong and protective, yet gentle, loving, and trustworthy. Every woman wants to find security, security in the arms of a man who is willing to lay down his life for her. The church and the world need men like St. Joseph. He is a model husband. It's a beautiful quote from Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. St. Joseph was the spouse of Mary. In the same way, each father sees himself entrusted with the mystery of womanhood through his own wife. Dear fathers, like St. Joseph, respect and love your spouse, and by your love and your, and your wise presence, lead your children to God. Wow. Every Catholic heart wants shepherds like St. Joseph as well, priests, bishops, and the Pope to be our spiritual fathers who are gentlemen chivalrous warriors, protectors, and defenders. Catholics expect their priests and bishops to be prayerful, trustworthy, gentle, compassionate, and virtuous. The Bride of Christ, the Church, deserves to have leaders who are willing to fight off the wolves for love of the flock, to slay spiritual dragons, and preach the truth with passion, Christian charity, and zeal. St. Joseph is the model of all fatherhood. Without looking to the model of St. Joseph, no husband, father, or priest will ever fully understand what it means to be a sacrificial man, 
a loving husband, a father, and a truly masculine saint. Saint Joseph is the model husband and father for all men. The vocation of all men is to be at the service of those entrusted to their love and care. Sadly, many men have forgotten this today, but St. Joseph will help them to remember or to learn it for the first time. He will help men be holy and chivalrous again. All men discover in St. Joseph a model of strength, fidelity, heroism, and virtue. If men, husbands, fathers, priests, and bishops follow the example of St. Joseph, Families will be loving and secure, husbands will be holy, priests will be dragon slayers, and bishops will again be the shepherds of souls and the pillars of truth. Real men are true gentlemen in its service to others. Real men love. Real men protect women and children against any and all threats. Real men are willing to die for their wives and their children. And that's scriptural. For a man to lay down his life for his wife and children. Holy priests and bishops will be willing to suffer and die for souls entrusted to their care. Priests and bishops of this caliber are not afraid of ridicule, slander, poverty, or imprisonment. Men, like St. Joseph, are willing to fight for what they love, what is good, true, and beautiful. May the church and families once again be filled with such men. There's a beautiful quote by Pope Leo XIII. Maybe you should read it. To you, O blessed Joseph, we come in our trials, and having asked the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently ask your patronage also. Wow. Now, recent years, we've had a beautiful example of a, um, of a cardinal willing to uh, go through imprisonment, and that was Cardinal George Pell of Austria. He was wrongly imprisoned um, and used that time to pray for the church and to offer it up. He has been released, but I, he was the first person who came to my mind when I realized the reading and how it connected to him. Okay, we're moving on to day 12. And again, this deals with the Blessed Mother. Chaste, virgin, chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. It's the title. Chastity is a virtue and a very important virtue. To be chaste is to have self-mastery, to be in control of your passions and sexuality. Contrary to what most people think, or our culture supports, contrary, a person who exercises chastity is not repressing or rejecting the beauty of human sexuality. On the contrary, chastity preserves the human heart and the body for authentic self-giving. All people, no matter their vocation in life, are called to a life of chastity. Chastity is the virtue that prevents us from being slaves to our passions and acting like irrational and rational animals. On the other hand, celibacy, sometimes we get those mixed up, this is different. Celibacy is a form of chastity. God has called and does call men and women to be celibate for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, our priests and religious. St. Joseph was both chaste and celibate. He was called by God to espouse a virgin consecrated to God in her mind, body, and soul. St. Joseph was the chaste guardian of the virgin. St. Joseph and Mary lived in what is called a Josephite marriage. They were truly husband and wife, but they never engaged in sexual relations. Their vocation was to be united in heart, mind, and soul 
but never in body. They were both consecrated to God and sacrificed a natural good for a greater good, the salvation of souls. St. Joseph is an example of having a pure heart. To be chaste is to be pure of heart. If a person's heart is not pure, they're not capable of seeing God. Modern man has become blinded by impurity. The world encourages premarital relations, cohabitation, contraception, and many other immoral practices. Chastity is a forgotten virtue. Even married couples live with the idea that they are free to do whatever they desire with the body of their spouse. However, this is not true. Chastity is required within marriage as well in order for couples to truly love one another, to retain their dignity and their respect for each other. If more men were like St. Joseph today, protectors and defenders of beauty instead of users and abusers of feminine ministry, mystery, what a very different world we would be living in. So it's a lot of food for thought on the whole idea of what it is to be a man and actually in how to, in how to be a woman um, and what we expect from the men in our lives. I'll let you take over. Okay. We continue on with our days. And what this, we are right now on day 13. And the title of day 13 is Foster Father of the Son of God, Pray for Us. Christians use many terms to describe the fatherhood of St. Joseph. He is called the legal, putative, spiritual, virginal, and foster father of Jesus. While none of these titles is found in the New Testament, they are all legitimate ways of describing St. Joseph's fatherhood. Of all these titles, foster father is the most common. The reason is the most common title is because naming of the child in ancient Jewish custom was the legal responsibility of the father. And, according, and this is St. Albert the Great. Although you, St. Joseph, are not necessary for the child's conception and birth, Nevertheless, you will become for his sustenance, you will be necessary for his sustenance, and your first care will concern his name. St. Joseph's legal responsibility of naming the, Jesus, the Christ child was given by God when the angel revealed to Joseph that he was not to be afraid to take Mary and the child in her womb into his home and under his care. St. Joseph's role of naming the Savior is an extremely important one. It is meant to signify to the world that Joseph, St. Joseph, is the legal father of Jesus. His role as the foster father of Jesus might come across as something merely contractual, but in the Latin, it provides us with a deeper insight into St. Joseph's role. In Latin, the title given to Joseph is Fili Dei Nutrici. It means nurturer of the Son of God. As you can see, the title Foster Father is a very poor translation from the Latin original. Calling just St. Joseph the Foster Father of Jesus is valid, but it needs to be emphasized that St. Joseph's fatherhood was more than a legal fatherhood. It was an authoritative, affectionate, faithful, an everlasting fatherhood. The loving relationship between a spiritual father and the child endures forever. In other words, Jesus continues to be the son of Joseph in heaven. In paradise, St. Joseph no longer exercises a legal fatherhood over Jesus, but his relationship of love, affection, and faithfulness toward Jesus as well as with the mystical body of Christ, remains. Jo St. Joseph's spiritual fatherhood over Christ and his mystical body endures forever. 
St. Joseph will always be our spiritual father. What is valid for Jesus is valid for you. St. Joseph is forever your spiritual father. He took care of Jesus while on earth, and St. Joseph will take care of us on our earthly pilgrimage. St. Joseph is our loving provider, educator, and protector. St. Joseph will continue to be our father, not on an earthly level, but on a spiritual level. So in heaven, you will forever be known as a child of St. Joseph. On day 14, day 14, the title is Zealous Defender of Christ, Pray for Us. From the moment the angel revealed to St. Joseph that he was to be the father of the Messiah, to when he took his final breath in the arms of Jesus and Mary, St. Joseph zealously defended Jesus. He always defended his son from any threat against him. St. Joseph was a dutiful watchman, guarding, defending, and sacrificing everything for Jesus. He offered the same protection for his wife as well. He protected his son and his wife as a loving father and faithful husband. Your spiritual father also desires to zealously defend you. The paternal mission of St. Joseph is not finished. A father's work is never finished until his children are safely home. St. Joseph no longer needs to watch over and protect Jesus. You, however, are not in heaven yet. Neither am I. And so, we need the protection of St. Joseph. Our spiritual father knows what's harmful to our soul, and he wants to watch over us and help us safely arrive home. He will never abandon us. Our role is to entrust ourselves to his diligent care and never look back. This is a quote from Blessed William Joseph Chaminade. Our, des our destiny is in the hands of St. Joseph, the guardian of his Lord and the spouse of the queen. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus and the head of the Holy Family, has in his kindness deigned to accept us as his children and permits us to call him father. Beautiful quote. St. Joseph held the maker of the universe in his hands. He fed the creator of the heavens. St. Joseph lovingly commanded the Son of God. Heaven and earth obeyed him. All hell trembles before him. St. Joseph will teach us how to defend Christ zealously. If you're a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, you are going to be criticized, hated, ridiculed, and mocked by the world, oftentimes by our own family and friends. Our suffering will be great, but our witness to truth, our witness to Jesus, will be greater. St. Joseph will help us be a zealous witness to the truth of Jesus Christ. We should always strive to defend the person in the name of Jesus Christ against all blasphemy, insult, and sacrilege. We must defend the church as well as her teachings and sacraments from all attacks, heresies, and falsehoods. To defend the church is to defend Christ. We must resemble our spiritual father, St. Joseph, always willing to sacrifice ourselves for the love of truth. St. Joseph, and you too, can bring many souls to Jesus. And the final day, day 15, the title is Head of the Holy Family, Pray for Us. Today, calling a man the head of a family is frowned upon. But God's not worried about political correctness. However, he established the family and designated that fathers be the heads of their families. Now, this doesn't mean that men are better than women. After all, the greatest human person who ever lived was not a man, but a woman, Mary. Remember, Mary, the mother of God. Remember, Jesus is a divine person. 
Jesus and Mary both delighted in the headship of St. Joseph in their home. Why are many people offended by such terminology today? Sadly, it often stems from having been emotionally, physically, or sexually abused by a father figure. Such abuse breaks the heart of God. Yes, yet the crisis in manhood can be corrected if men begin to imitate St. Joseph. His fatherly example shows that strength, authority, and headship are meant to be at the service of others. And this is a pope from Pope Leo XIII. In Joseph, heads of the household are blessed with the unsurpassed model of fatherly watchness, watchfulness and care. Husbands and fathers need to imitate St. Joseph. Families around the world will experience a revolution of holiness if husbands imitate St. Joseph. Passages in the New Testament will no longer be seen as offensive, but life-giving. There's the passage from St. Paul, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. The, the uh, problem that people have with this is not because of a loving relationship with a husband or a father. It's because usually there's some form of an abuse in the past. And that, that usually puts the, uh, taints the title of head. We can make St. Joseph the spiritual head of our family. We can obtain a statue or a beautiful image of St. Joseph for our home. We can place it in a prominent location and frequently invoke the intercession of St. Joseph as family. And you will see the difference that St. Joseph makes. Uh, numbers of saints have talked about how devotion to St. Joseph, um, it just surpasses, surpasses devotion to any other saint. Most likely because when, when God gives the allowance for a saint or the uh, gift or special privilege of a saint to be the patron of something, there's, it's usually limited to a few things. Yet St. Joseph can be our patron in everything because Jesus totally entrusted himself to him and Mary did it as well. So with that, I'm going to bring Catherine up. Um, I've already gone through Ite uh, Joseph. So she will come up and uh, talk about the other wonder. Okay. That's awesome. Um, we are, unfortunately, we're only able to bring you two of the wonders each week. But throughout the year, we will uh, try to cover the ones that we aren't able to bring on a weekly basis. But we chose this one because this one is called the wonder, and it's dedicated to the young husband of Mary. Young husband. Now let's look into that. There's a beautiful quote by St. Jose Maria Escriva, and I'm going to read that to you now. I don't agree. These are the saint's words. I don't agree with the traditional picture of St. Joseph as an old man. Even though it may have been promoted by a desire to emphasize the perpetual virginity of Mary, I see him as a strong young man, man, perhaps a few years older than Our Lady, but in the prime of his life and work. Wow! Have you ever read or heard such a statement from a saint about the age of St. Joseph? I never had. St. Maria had very good reasons for asserting that St. Joseph was a young man when he married Our Lady. And St. Jose is not the only one who thinks this way. Explain. The Catholic Church has no formal official teaching on the age of St. Joseph. You and I are each free to believe that St. Joseph was an old man, when he was espoused to Mary, and you're also free to believe that he was a young man. The physical demands of his mission make the probability of him being an old man practically zero. If you consider the titles that the Church gives St. Joseph in his litany, Guardian of the Redeemer, 
guardian of the virgin, guardian of, um, I'm saying, chaste guardian of the virgin, model of workmen, terror of demons. Wow. They lean in the direction that St. Joseph was young and strong. These titles are not descriptions of an old man. Is an old man capable of guarding virgins? Can an elderly man serve as a model of laborers? It takes strength to be a guardian. It takes health to be a worker. Can an old man do these things? Yes, but it is, takes a lot more out of them, and really they are things that you would expect from a young man. That's my take on it. As Mother Angelica, who's one of my favorites, says, what well, she was famous for saying, old men don't walk to Egypt. Egypt was a long, long hike, and it was unlikely that an elderly man could have made such a trek. Old men are not known for their physical capability of doing the kinds of things that St. Joseph was required to do for the Holy Family. I'm just going to give you some words of Bishop, of Venerable Bishop Fulton Sheen. I'm taking them all out of context. I'm just going all over with his long quote. Just a few of his thoughts. Was he St. Joseph, young or old? Most of statues and pictures we see of Joseph today represent him as an old man with a great beard, gray beard when he took Mary and her vow under his protection. To make Joseph out as old portrays for us a man who has little vital energy left, rather than one who, having it, keeps it restrained in chains for God's sake and his holy purposes. Furthermore, it's reasonable to believe that our Lord would prefer a foster father for Jesus, someone who had made a sacrifice, rather than someone who was forced into it. He also gives the, the thoughts that Joseph was probably a young man, very strong, athletic, handsome, chaste, and disciplined. Instead of, a man of, instead of being a man incapable of loving, he must have been on fire with love. He was not in the evening of his life, but in the morning, bubbling over with energy, strength, and controlled passion. The beautiful thoughts from Venerable Bishop Fulton Sheen. As the father of Jesus, St. Joseph was a zealous defender and strong protector of his beloved son. St. Joseph sacrificed everything, including the pleasures of conjugal love, to fulfill his mission as guardian of the Virgin and guardian of the Redeemer. A guardian is someone who is strong, not only in mind and heart, but also physically. St. Joseph was given the task of guarding the temple of Mary's body, and in particular, her virginity. As a young husband and father, St. Joseph modeled manhood, manhood, for his son Jesus. Every boy should be able to look to his father to understand what it is to be a man. Those are beautiful, beautiful words from Father Donald Calloway. Every boy should be able to look to his father to understand what it is to be a true man. Wow. What the church and the world can learn from a younger depiction of St. Joseph especially in theology, preaching, literature, and art, is that young men, young men, can be chaste, heroic, and holy. Regardless of which depiction of St. Joseph you prefer, know that St. Joseph is your loving, strong, and fearless spiritual father. We should all thank him for all that he did out of selfless love for Jesus, and our spiritual mother, Mary. Thank him for all he does for love of you. I just, um, 
I loved this particular wonder and how he went deeper into it for us, the great um, meaning of what a man needs to be for his family. And if we aren't there, this isn't meant to make a man or a woman feel bad about, this is meant to encourage us. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, it's never too late to try to emulate and become this apparition of St. Joseph or Mary in our lives, in our families. All right. And so we're going to, at the closing of tonight's episode, we are going to remind you to keep praying the rosary for peace in the world and protection of unborn children and for the conversion of sinners. And now we're going to close with a litany to St. Joseph. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Holy Mary. Have mercy on us. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Noble offspring of David. Pray for us. Light of patriarchs. Pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God. Pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin. Pray for us. Foster father of the Son of God. Pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ. Pray for us. Head of the Holy Family. Pray for us. Joseph most just. Pray for us. Joseph most chaste. Pray for us. Joseph most prudent. Pray for us. Joseph most courageous. Pray for us. Joseph most obedient. Pray for us. Joseph most faithful. Pray for us. Mirror of patience. Pray for us. Lover of poverty. Pray for us. Model of workmen. Pray for us. Glory of domestic life. Pray for us. Guardian of virgins. Pray for us. Pillar of families. Pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted. Pray for us. Hope of the sick. Pray for us. Patron of the dying. Pray for us. Terror of demons. Pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church. Pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household. And prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we're going to ask uh, for God's blessing upon everyone, and especially those who are in need of prayer, uh, in need of healing of, of any kind, whether it's bodily, emotional, or spiritual. We ask God to send his blessing upon us and, uh, and help us to gain that healing that, we, that he knows that we need. And so we ask him, we ask God's blessing, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for being here with us, and we uh, look forward to seeing you next week for week four. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the end.